Okay, in this video I'd like to talk to you about the normalized wave functions for a 1D quantum linear harmonic oscillator. So, in the past few videos I've shown you how to calculate u0 of y, uh, u1 of y, and u2 of y. And I normalized, I showed you how to calculate all of them unnormalized, and, and I did normalize these two here. So, I'm not going to normalize the third wave function, or u2 of y, I'm just going to tell you the answers. So, I'm just going to write them down. We had u0 of y was equal to m omega over pi h bar to the quarter and that's going to be multiplied we'll say by 1 just just bear with me for a moment and we're going to have e to the minus y squared over 2 like that okay then we're going to have u1 of y was equal to that that same constant I'm just going to call it a okay so this a this one this time we had root 2 okay and we had um, we had what was it y times e to the minus y squared over 2 and I'm going to say that u2 of y, that u2 of y is going to be equal to our constant again, times um, one over. Now, just going to bear with me. I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm going to explain this in a moment. Four y squared minus two times e to the minus y squared over two. Now, the thing about this here is this. I've act, there's a bit of a sleight of hand taking place inside here because I didn't do it, so I'm not going to explain it yet. But up here, notice I multiplied by 1. Now, why did I multiply by 1? Um, well, I did because it turns out that the, the actual normalization constants associated with this are called the Hermite polynomials. Okay, H-E-R-M-I-T-E -E polynomials. And these basically are just a solution to a differential equation, the, a solution to a very particular differential equation. And it happens that these solutions appear everywhere in physics. So, it's uh, literally the case, we'll say U2 has the uh, the second... Um, or excuse me, u2 has a third polynomial, u4 will have the it will have the fifth polynomial, and so on. And literally, it's just the case of multiplying your wave function here times your your normalization constant, and then there are meet polynomials in the middle. All right. So how we, how we have to manipulate, I suppose, our equations in order to get this. So I normalized my normalized u1 was this here, but this root two is actually not a Hermite polynomial, not yet anyway. However, if I write it as this, if I write it as 2 and over 1 over root 2, then we have our Hermite polynomials. So this is the way you'll find them written. And why did I write 1 over root 2 here? I'm not too sure. That should be 1 over root 8. Alright? So basically we have our Hermite polynomials. Now there is a general way, general way of writing it, uh, which I'm not actually going to bother doing. But the point anyway here is as follows. These wave functions are either even or odd. Uh, uh, odd. Excuse me. Even or odd. Okay? And this is due to the invariance of the Hamiltonian under inversion. Now, I don't know if I did a video on this, but basically the Hamiltonian commutes to the parity operator. And that means that, uh, basically, the parity operator is has eigenvalues of minus 1 and plus 1. And if something commutes with the parity operator, that means that the, or the eigenfunctions of this operator, in this case the Hamiltonian, will be even or odd. So as in minus 1 for odd and plus 1 for even. And it turns out that the Hamiltonian when you put in, we'll say, minus x or whatever for each of your values, it, it, it commutes basically with your, um, with your parity operator, which is this bad boy here. And that means it's even or odd. So because it is even or odd, that means the wave functions are going to be even or odd as well. And, for example, can we get some even or odd wave functions? Yeah, I'm going to show you some even or odd wave functions now. So anyway, these, all these ones are even or odd. And um, let's, let's just draw some of them. So the first wave function is this one here. That's u1 u2 actually I'm going to draw it I'm going to draw it in a better way and I'm going to t show you how to draw them as well because it's not as straightforward as you think there's actually um, there's symmetry there but it's not always easy to see the symmetry that's for sure it's not always easy to see the symmetry so u1 does this that's u1 or we'll say excuse me u0 the first wave function u2 then now this is an even wave function the reason it's even I know I do it poorly but the reason it's even is it's, sym it's symmetric around the origin you can spin it around the origin and it's the same wave function however an odd wave function is not symmetric around the origin so our odd wave function is going to be this that's our odd wave function so we've even odd this is u1 now how do we draw our next one I'm going to tell you how you draw your next one you shift everything to the right by one, we'll say, um, you shift everything to the right by, um, by, we'll say, half of, uh, I don't know how to describe that, by, we'll say, a quarter of a wavelength, and then you add a new one of these. So in this case, we're going to have the following. You're going to have, okay, like that, 
and this one here we're going to shift everything to the right and add a new segment so our new segment is going to look something like this it's going to be like that I know I drew that poorly now now that's a bit better I suppose like that and if you want to draw our, our next one let's draw our next one so we shift all of this to the right by one and then we add a new segment so that's, that by the way should be up there so that means that our segment is going to look something like this I'm terrible at drawing but we'll see yeah like that it looks something like this now I know I haven't represented it properly in my diagrams yet but the outer the we'll say the, the outer um, troughs or the outer peaks are actually higher so these ones should be like this in fact these ones should be like this if you're good at drawing then this would be no problem to you and these ones here should be these this should be much higher oh no that's that should be low but these ones should be high like that all right now what if I add another one what if I added a load more onto this you might have something you might have something like this you might have something like this okay now if you look carefully I know that my drawing is absolutely shocking but if you look careful if you draw if you connect all the troughs here you're getting something looking like a parabola and now I'm going to rub this out because I'm going to go at it again right the energy levels the energy levels on your classical harmonic oscillator are like this they are a parabola every energy level is allowed but the, all quantum ones should become classical if you go to if you get enough particles or enough energy in the system so how does we'll say our wave functions how do the wave functions suddenly become uh, become this and I'll show you the answer now in a moment so say we have if we had the our third wave function looked something like this our third wave function looked something like this if we took the amplitude of that or the square of it it would look look something like this and look we have our parabola there so what we do is we take the amplitude of our quantum uh, our quantum linear our quantum um, wave functions and we get the classical one so let's and what it look like is this it'll look something like this it looks something like this okay so these are all the amplitudes that's why we have nothing below the line here and we can see that as you get more and more apparent or more and more energy it tends towards your uh, your classical oscillator so I, I don't know I think my drawing there is terrible but thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel